So here we are, 2.3a, college algebra. This is called quadratic equations, functions, and models. Now if we went back to 2.1, it was linear equations, functions, and models. So quadratic equations, well, let's just put linear equations are in the form y equals mx plus b, and quadratic equations are in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, where this number cannot equal to zero. All right, a quadratic function um, is written instead of this way. It's written, but we're going to, instead of a zero, we're going to put an f of x there, which means basically that's our y value. And this two right here, the right here, the exponent, tell the leading exponent will tell you um, how many answers you're going to get. And what a quadrat or what all of these equations do is once you find x, you are finding where the graph crosses the x-axis. So if you got a quadratic equation and you got a number like that and like that for an answer, that's where it's going to cross the x-axis. That's the answers to a quadratic equation. This is geometrically shown, and we're going to do it algebraically, so you can use algebra to find out what the answer is. And it's called the root of the equation, and it's also called the zeros of the equation or the function. So, um, we're just going to go ahead and get started here. Um, let's do 2x squared minus x equals 3. Okay, first thing we're going to do is set that equal to 0. 2x squared minus x minus 3 equals 0. And we've done this before, so I'm not going to go over all of the details on how to do it. But remember, 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Find two numbers multiplied together, give you that. Added together, give you a negative 1 there. Okay, and then you group them together and pull things out. All right, so, gosh, maybe I need to just do that rather than just assume you all remember how to do that. All right, so I had 2x squared minus x minus 3 equals 0. You can fast forward this if you want to. Okay, so 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Two numbers multiplied together give you that, added together give you that. So we've got a 3 and a 2. Um, minus 3x plus 2x minus 3 equals 0. So those two numbers multiplied together give us negative 6, added together give us our negative 1 there. All right, then we group. Okay, factor out an x there. Factor out nothing there, so it's just a 1 there. And we get x plus 1 times 2x minus 3 equals 0. Okay, so that should be old stuff for you. So x equals negative 1, and this one, what makes that equal to 0? 2x equals 3, x equals 3 halves. So there's my two x's. So what that means is that my graph, when I have it here, here's my graph, um, crosses at one and a half, it also crosses at negative one. Okay, and we'll get to why it goes in that shape, but that's what that means. It's where it crosses the x-axis. All right, jump up to example number two. All right, so example two says 2x squared minus 10 equals zero. Going to factor out a two. Okay, we don't care about this 2 right there at all. We're just concerned about x squared minus 5 equals 0. x squared equals 5. Square root both sides. And x equals the square root of plus or minus the square root of 5. So two answers, positive square root of 5, negative square root of 5. So that means where it crosses the x-axis is at square root of 5, which is uh, here more than 2, and negative here more than 2, and then we draw our... All right, so notice what we've got here. If I were to ask you what that point is, you would say it's the square root of 5, 0, 
and this is negative square root of 5, 0, right? So the answer you get in a quadratic equation is going to be the x value of the point. The y value will always be 0 because, remember, I said ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, and I also said it's equal to f of x because the y value must be 0 where it crosses the x-axis. X, the y doesn't go up or down, so therefore f of x is equal to 0. The y value is equal to 0. The x value is the first number right there. It tells you how far left or right of the origin you're going. First number is the x. Second number will always be the 0 there. All right. This is stuff that nobody ever taught me. I just kind of had to figure it out on my own, and it was not a fun time. All right. So we've seen that quadratic equations can be solved by factoring and using the principle of zero products. So, for example, x squared minus 3x minus 4 equals zero. And this can be broken into two binomials, x plus 1, x minus 4. So x equals negative 1, or x equals 4. We get two real number solutions there, right? And we can go ahead and graph that. Sometimes you won't get two real number solutions. Well, you'll get two real number solutions, but because I told you, when you're doing these, this number will tell you how many answers you get. That will always be the case, but sometimes the answer will be, well, let's just do this one. x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals 0. Let's go ahead and factor this. So x equals 3 here, and x equals 3 from here. So I got two answers, but they're the same number. So when I graph this, where is my graph? It's going to be at 1, 2, 3. And if I, did, if I did actually graph this equation, it would look like that. So it did cross it at two places, but the two places are the same number. So when you get one number for an answer, what that means is the vertex of the graph is going to be the answer that you've got there. Okay, so let's look at another one. Let's look at x squared plus 13 equals 0. Okay, so let's solve this. Come on. Why is my pen not working? Alright, so x squared equals negative 13. Take the square root of both sides and we get x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 13. Or, what you're going to end up with is plus or minus the square root of 13i. Remember, the negative means an i. What that means, we've got an imaginary number. It means it does not have a real number solution. So the graph may look like this. It does not cross the x-axis because that would be a real number. This is an imaginary number. Okay, So just so you know, it has no x-intercepts. That's okay. You have an answer. It just doesn't cross the x-axis. Alright, so let's jump to completing the square. In completing the square, um, there's three different ways to solve quadratic equations. One is factoring into two binomials. One is completing the square, which we're going to review right now. And the other one is using the quadratic equation. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared um, minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, so we're going to start with completing the square. I'm not going to go and show you how we develop the equation. We're just going to do it. Okay, so let's look at... Uh, Example number three. So we have f of x equals x squared minus 6x minus 10. Okay? Do this by completing the square. First thing we're going to do is uh, 
make it equal to zero. And I like to put the zero over here and get rid of that. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to move the 10 over to the other side and leave a space for it. And we're going to replace the 10 that we moved out of there with half of this squared and add it. And we're going to add it to both sides. I'm going kind of fast here because, golly, we've done this. Okay, so the number that goes here is always half this squared. All right, so once we do that, we make a parenthesis. This sign goes here. Square root of that goes there. Square root of that goes there. And that squared equals 19. Square root both sides. And x equals plus or minus the square root of 19 plus 3. Or we can take the 3 and put it in front of there. 3 plus or minus the square root of 19. Okay, so that means we have... Um, let's, in fact, let's write it that way. We have two answers. We have 3 plus the square root of 19, which is a little over 4, and 3 minus the square root of 19. Those are our two answers. That is where it crosses the x-axis. Okay? Right here and right here. So I will quit this video here and we will do example 4 in 2.3 B as in boy.